Devotional service following in the footsteps of the gopis of Vrindavan or the queens at Dvorka is called devotional service in conjugal love. This devotional service in conjugal love can be divided into two categories. One is indirect conjugal love, the other direct. In both of these categories, one has to follow the particular gopi who is engaged in such service in Goloka Vrindavan. To be directly attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in conjugal love is technically called Kali. This Kali performance means to directly join with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There are other devotees who do not wish direct contact with the Supreme Person, but who relish the conjugal love affairs of the Lord with the gopis. Such devotees enjoy simply by hearing of the activities of the Lord with the gopis. This development of conjugal love can be possible only with those who are already engaged in following the regulative principles of devotional service, specifically in the worship of Radha and Krishna in the temple. Such devotees gradually develop a spontaneous love for the deity, and by hearing of the Lord's exchange of loving affairs with the gopis, they gradually become attracted to these pastimes. After this spontaneous attraction becomes highly developed, the devotee is placed in either of the above-mentioned categories. So, <clears throat> this is very confidential. Actually, it's the most confidential uh, subject matter in our philosophy. Um, this conjugal love of Krishna is very important. Actually, it's the, the root of all devotional service. The, the chief of the gopis is Srimati Radharani. And Radharani is like the female form of Krishna. Uh, she is the chief of all Krishna's potencies. Uh, she's the Maha Shakti. And what that means is that all the other Shaktis in the spiritual world and even in the material world are derived from her. They're expansions of her. Just like the different uh, Vishnu forms in the Vaikuntha world and so on are expansions of Krishna. So in this way, uh, when we worship or when we follow the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, and we come we become engaged in this network of conjugal love of the Lord. And uh, this is very wonderful. So this can only happen, it's only possible for someone who is on the platform of conjugal love, or uh, sorry, spontaneous devotional service. Peter, whatever you're doing, it's very distracting. I'm talking about very, very sensitive things here, so please don't cause a disturbance. Um, what was they saying? Oh, this is only possible for someone who's on the platform of spontaneous devotional service. Someone who is completely pure. Huh? If someone says that, oh, I'm into conjugal uh, loving service of Krishna, and it's observed that they are still connected to mundane loving affairs in the material world, well, we can understand that they're, they're not really sincere. Um, only someone who's completely pure, because Krishna, well, just imagine, if you're engaged to marry someone, and you have an affair with somebody else, what's going to happen? It's going to disturb the whole relationship. Well, so similarly, if you have an aspiration to join with the Lord in conjugal loving affairs, and then you have some uh, sexual attachment in the material world, that's going to disturb the whole thing. And practically speaking, it's, it's finished. Krishna is not going to accept. Um, so the two kinds of, of uh, relationships, conjugal relationships described here, are uh, proper to two different classes of gopis. The, the uh, eternal shaktis are directly connected with Krishna. 
and the manjuris or the servant girls are indirectly connected with Krishna and relish the pastimes of Krishna and the gopis uh, indirectly by watching, by hearing, by serving, by uh, helping to make different arrangements for the pleasure of their lordships. So uh, this is described also in the prayers, the eight prayers to the spiritual master. The spiritual master is very beloved because he is always making arrangements uh, to assist the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. Uh, and all of these activities are performed in the spiritual body. And none of the conjugal loving affairs between Krishna and the, his devotees uh, are uh, experienced in the material body. We discussed this in some detail last night. Uh, that there's a class of devotees who try to imitate these pastimes with their material bodies. And these are called sahajya. Sahajya means someone who takes everything very cheaply, who, who thinks that he, he doesn't make any distinction between physical existence and spiritual existence. So this is a very incorrect understanding. Uh, so we don't accept the sahajyas as being uh, bona fide devotees. Maybe they're very, very neophyte devotees, but they're certainly not pure devotees. Uh, to be engaged in conjugal loving affairs with Krishna, you have to be a completely pure devotee. That means no material sense gratification. Huh? That all of your happiness, all of your pleasure comes from these spiritual loving affairs. Now, just like you saw tonight during the kirtan, the devotees were manifesting so many symptoms of spiritual pleasure. Huh? And this is natural for devotees. Um, this is really what devotional service is all about. This is the attractive feature that engages the devotee uh, because when he comes into contact with Krishna, whether directly or through his name or through his service or other means, it's like studying the philosophy and so on, he feels transcendental pleasure. And this transcendental pleasure is far more satisfying to the soul than any material pleasure because it's direct. Huh? The transcendental pleasure is directly perceived by pure consciousness. It is not indirectly experienced through an instrument like a gross material body or senses or even a mind, subtle material instrument. But the pleasure of devotional service is directly experienced by the soul. So when the soul and Krishna come together, then it's possible to experience these things. This is Krishna consciousness, uh, direct Krishna consciousness. Indirect Krishna consciousness is when someone accepts Krishna consciousness as a religion and they worship a symbol of Krishna. You see? And this symbol is the religious organization. You see, in religion, what happens is the organization itself is interposed between the soul and God. And the, the uh, followers are told, well, you can't worship God, so you have to worship the institution, the organization. You see? The organization is also spiritual, they say. So because you can't worship God, you can't worship God, you can't see God, can you? You don't know God directly? Okay, well then, so you have to worship the organization because that's the only th means that you have. So in this way, they actually cheat their followers. You see? And this is going on also in the, uh, the world of Vaishnavism. If we take Vaishnavism, Krishna consciousness, as an ordinary religion, and we create some organization, and then we get people to serve and worship that organization. Uh, that means we're actually cheating them. The actual Krishna consciousness is an esoteric school where the devotees, the disciples come and they study directly with a self-realized soul. And the self-realized soul initiates them into the mystical practices of advanced Krishna consciousness where the soul contacts Krishna directly. Huh? 
So this is real Krishna consciousness. It's Krishna consciousness, not Krishna organizationness, not Krishna religionness, not Krishna ritualness, not Krishna go out and collect money for the for the guru's gold bathroom fixtures-ness. Huh? It's Krishna consciousness, direct meeting between the soul and God. And that can only happen within. It cannot happen out there through the senses, through the mind, through any kind of activity out there in the physical world. It can only happen within consciousness to consciousness. Huh? Direct contact between the soul and God. This is real Krishna consciousness. Everything else is some preliminary stage. Try to understand. So for someone who is not on this platform of direct consciousness of Krishna, to say that they have some conjugal loving